Thanks, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, for those of you who are in a location where it is afternoon, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about what's going on in training and outreach inside the communications department um, and for the community. So if I could have the next slide. First of all, um, I want to stop for a second and, and point out that we do, in fact, at Aaron, have the best team working together to bring you um, this outreach and training content. I, I feel very fortunate to lead this group. It occurred to me yesterday that up until um, to lockdown, we were kind of a Fred Astaire sort of operation. We made it look good. You know, you you could see us come in. We it was great. Since COVID, it's been all Ginger Rogers. We're dancing backward and learning the choreography, kind of on the fly, trying to keep up, so that you're still seeing the same kind of results. Um, but uh, it, trust me that they, there's been a lot of learning and a lot of growth and uh, and challenges that the team has overcome, and I'm super proud. So let's move on to the next slide. I just want to reintroduce um, folks and introduce folks who haven't met them yet to this team. You haven't seen us all in person yet. We're looking forward to getting the chance to get back on the ground with you. Um, this is how we look in our day to day, um, not always with filters, but we were having a little bit of fun. I want to point out a couple of differences um, and changes in the team since the start of the year. Uh, or since last year, Jennifer Bly has accepted a, um, a promotion and she's become our external relations manager. I'm really proud of Jennifer and all of her growth and in tackling this new role. With this shift, it has allowed us to kind of refocus our efforts um, inside the group and Jennifer's really tackling projects um, that are for folks outside of our immediate customer community. There's a lot of crossover and blending in outreach and training. So when I'm presenting this on behalf of the group, I'm really presenting it on behalf of Jennifer and I, and I'm gonna kind of point out to you some things that she particularly spearheads because I'm just really excited about all the work that she's doing. And then I also wanna point out that Amanda Golden is our newest uh, member of the team and she's running a community engagement and she's gonna feature highly in this presentation. There, are, She wins the Hit the Ground Running Award. Um, there are a number of things that she has not even, she's created and launched since she joined the team. So she's amazing and we're really, glad to have her on the team, but all of these folks are simply fabulous and the best people in the world to work with. So I hope that you get to meet them all in person soon. Next slide. All right, a quick recap of 2020. Let's keep moving. We were able to get a lot done in 2020. Obviously, we had to slow down and regroup um, and kind of refocus and figure out how we were gonna take all of these things that we had planned to do with you guys in person and make them all virtual. So where we landed by the end of the year is that we were able to conduct nine live training sessions. And then when we completed those sessions, we also packaged, repackaged them for on-demand use. So by the end of the year, we had about 700 viewers who had been able to access and take advantage of our training programs. And those covered IPv6 address planning, leadership development, and um, a first run of our getting to know IRR online for our new um, IRR service. We had conducted two virtual meetings by the end of the year, and we were really happy to see that across those meetings, we had about 278 attendees. So we're actually hitting numbers like we would expect to see at in-person meetings at these virtual events, which is a great outcome. We really weren't sure what kind of response we would get when we took Aaron meetings virtual, but it didn't have a big, comp uh, big impact on participation um, in a negative way. So we were very excited about that. And then at the end of the year, um, this is one of Amanda's projects. We'll talk about this a little bit more as we go through what's coming and is happening in 2021. We launched a new program that is strictly focused on new customers. For a long time, we've done our Aaron on the road program, and we're looking forward to bringing that back. But the piece that we were most worried about losing when everything went virtual was the ability to connect with our newest customers and help them understand the tools and services available that, to them here at Aaron. Um, Amanda spearheaded a group to put together that program. We launched it in December. We ran three sessions, kind of back to back, and we had over 65%. We had 65 participants between those three sessions, which heading into the holidays um, was a great response, and we got more great feedback that has helped us with our planning for 2021. So we move to the next slide. All right, I want to talk for a moment about our 2021 strategy and focus. So we have kind of a code word now, it's value. Everything is about value. What does that mean? Um, basically, it's, it's all about building on the successes of the past and figuring out ways to iterate. 
we have had some tool changes and we're hoping that those will provide a better experience. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I took a sneak peek at some of those uh, survey results for the meeting so far this morning. And it seems like we're having some um, growing pains with our new meeting platform tool. That's cool. Please complete your surveys, tell us your challenges. We're really glad to hear about them and we're looking forward to iterating and making that work better for you in the future. Um, we're still learning and getting familiar with the platform ourselves. So the more you can tell us about the features that you wanna see or that you're missing, um, the more we can do to make it work better in the future. We're also using your feedback on all of our programs um, as we collect it. So it's really important, again, going back to surveys, for you to tell us what you think when we get to the end of something, because we use that to define our priorities so that we can strive to provide you with the best information um, that you need to be successful in your interactions with Aaron and in your professional life as it applies to who, what we can do for you. I have the next slide. So lots of things on the horizon. Um, we can move on. Aaron Optimize. I talked about this briefly. This was launched at the end of last year. It's a quarterly by invitation only onboarding for new customers. We have done our first for Q1 of 2021. It went great. We had, a, I think we had 35 participants in that, which was a great turnout. We're going to be continuing to do those across the year. So as folks are getting resources or um, setting up their organizations, they're going to be getting an invitation in that, um, or notice in that email that they will be receiving an invitation to participate in one of these events. And we hope that they will take advantage um, because it's a lot of great information about how to, how to kind of make the most of your experience with Aaron, hence the name optimized. Moving on. All right, strategic partnerships program. And this is Jennifer's baby and she's done an amazing job with it. Um, we launched this in 2020. Um, this kind of came out of a need that filtered through from the office of the CCO, which was we had all these relationships with industry communities, research and education institutions, and all these folks that we used to present at their conferences or go to their, um, their expos and events. And when everything kind of quieted down, um, how did we how do we keep this going so we've done some very targeted outreach with those groups to help identify opportunities for us to take content that typically we present through Aaron and take it directly to their communications or through to their venues and hosting it um, through their platforms for their customers so thus far we've had six informational webinars we've had amazing turnout we're trying to do about two a quarter um, but it's been a, a great program so far. Next slide. All right, leadership development. This one's coming around again real soon. Um, we'll be running the 2021 election session for on the 20th of May. Um, Leslie Nobile is gonna be leading this year again, I think. And basically this one is focused on educating candidates about the roles and responsibility of the board of trustees for the board of trustees advisory council and the NRO number council. Um, we also publish this one as available on demand for folks that maybe aren't ready to make that commitment decision, aren't sure they want to go down that road when we offer it live, but maybe they want to come back and look at it. Um, so that'll be recorded on May 20th. There'll be a live session that day, and then we'll be making that available for folks who are considering candidacy this year. Next slide. All right. Virtual fellowship program. Mad props to Amanda for pulling this together. Our fellowship program has been kind of uh, one of our premier programs over the last decade. And we really hated to let it sit side, to the side last year while we were ad adapting to virtual meetings. And so it was really important for us to figure out a way to bring this back as a virtual event while we were continuing to host meetings in this format. It's, it's been a great way and continues to be a great way to broaden inclusion, diversity, and engagement, and get new people on board and feeling comfortable and confident to participate at Aaron meetings. For the virtual fellowship program, we had three great mentors step forward from the uh, advisory council to guide our eight fellows through the program. And we'll be opening uh, applications for the Aaron 48 series here very soon over the summer. Um, one thing I want to point out is some of the some of the features that we've been able to do in this new format are so much better than what we were actually able to accomplish in person. Um, 
in the context of a meeting that we're probably going to keep them um, as part of the overall program once we're back to having in person meetings. So it's definitely been a way to grow and expand upon what we can offer to our fellows and I'm really excited about it and that feedback has been amazing. Next slide. Aaron training. We've got a number of training things that are coming up real soon. So keep an eye out. There'll be announcements coming as registration opens. Uh, on the 13th of May, we're planning to do another live run of our IPv6 address planning basics. That was by far our most popular training program to date. And so that's gonna be available again live and then we'll have that back as an on-demand after that. Um, we ran one session of the IRR online training last year. We're going to be hosting a new one, a new live session, 27 May. And then again, we'll be publishing that as on demand for folks who can't make that session. So be on the lookout for those. Perhaps most importantly, um, we've got a new training uh, that's going to be coming very soon. We'll, we're hoping to open registration either here at the end of this week, early next week. And this one's going to be on using the RESTful API for IRR. Um, we obviously had to wait till that was all deployed, but that's coming up very soon and we're very excited to get more information on that out there and help folks take advantage and start using that system. Next slide. All right, as you can see, we may have had to slow down in 2020. We are picking up the pace. We've got a lot of things on our roadmap and we're hoping to get most all of these done before the end of this year, fingers crossed. Um, Perhaps most importantly, we have an RPKI basics uh, webinar that we're planning to do later this year. We wanted to let Brad Gorman get in and get his feet wet and get a sense of what's happening before we started bugging him to put together a webinar, but we'll be working with him to get that out before, hopefully by the fall meeting. We are planning to take a lot of our content that is currently used in our newcomers presentation and that has been part of our Aaron on the road and some of it's in the Aaron optimized as well and repackage that as an Aaron 101 video. And so that'll be available for folks who are just coming in and needing to learn about the organization or for folks outside who have somebody that they need to get up to speed about Aaron. It'll be a quick resource to point them at and that'll be a, a shorter video, um, which should be great. Another video that we're looking to put together is one on using the RDAP search on the Aaron website. When we transitioned to the new website, we shifted to using the RDAP service for the Whois search automatically through the website. And that's created um, some challenges for some users. The output is a little bit different. So we're putting together a video to help people use that better and help them understand where the differences are and, um, and hopefully make that a more useful service for them. Then next in line, we've got the base IRR basics, um, the online that we're running, and then the API. We're going to do a 201 session. So it'll be a kind of beyond the basics webinar, kind of next steps of getting digging a little deeper into using Aaron's IRR. And then last, this one's been kind of out there as a goal for a while with um, all the improvements to Aaron online over the last few years in the user interface. It's gotten much, much more friendly to use, but there's a lot of information to digest. So what we're looking to do is put together a short video that's kind of a dashboard tour, kind of what everything is, what it does and, and where to find it. So we're excited about that. And we're in the very early stages of putting together, I'm gonna to tease this a little bit, uh, a great program that we're launching, hoping to launch in 2022. We're calling it our IPv6 Pro Series. Basically, we've had a lot of requests for higher level IPv6 training that's kind of outside of Aaron's scope, but things that people in our community are doing. So we're looking to connect with people who are doing that work and bringing them to Aaron to present in a webinar format to provide some of that information to our community. So we're still baking that one, um, but we're very excited about it. And, and I think it's gonna be a, an exciting and useful program next year. Next slide. So, I covered a lot. Um, there's a lot we've got going, but we're still interested in getting your ideas. So if we can go to the next slide, I wanna walk you through the different ways you can kind of let us know. Um, we have a number of emails that kind of filter down to different portions of the team um, for information. If you email us at training at Aaron.net, that kind of funnels toward the training side of the house. And that's if you've got an inquiry about any of our training um, or educational materials or an idea for an event or a webinar, we want to hear from you. 
send it to that email. Blog at Aaron.net. We continue to have a thriving blog. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's grown from strength to strength. We're in the process of incorporating it into the Aaron.net site. We're hoping to have that work done inside this calendar year, but we're always looking for guest bloggers, um, folks that are interested in doing IPv6 case studies. So anything like that, send it to blog at Aaron.net. We'd be thrilled to work with you. And then meetings at Aaron.net is the other email that you can use. It sounds like it's very specific to meetings, which it is, but there are a couple other ways you can use that. If there's an industry group that you think that we should be partnering with or a topic that you think we should be covering somewhere, that's a good place to drop that message. Or if you need to request an Aaron speaker or would like to have a virtual help desk or a help desk at an event, you can also send those requests there. Next slide, please. So that was me speed talking. I'm gonna take a breath here and see if anybody has any questions. Fantastic, and we'll remind everyone. Thanks, Ms. Kara. We will remind everyone that um, you need to include your name and affiliation when you are typing questions into the Q&A section. As we get ready to wrap up, you're welcome to add the word Q and let us know that you're in the middle of typing. You're always welcome to raise your hand and speak yourself. And at this point, I will turn to our first question. Uh, this is from Gary Giesen from Central Logic and Aaron AC. Have you considered expanding your outreach efforts around the various councils, IPv6 and Aaron itself to new forums such as uh, Tech Field Day and various uh, technical podcasts to reach a new audience and engage a larger portion of the industry who you may otherwise have trouble reaching? No, nah, well, to be fair, Gary, I actually haven't thought of some of those things, which is why I like asking for ideas. We're often very busy and head down in all the things that are already on our plate, but we will make a note of that and look at if there are ways that we can connect with some of those folks. So that's super useful information and um, I really appreciate the ideas. Thanks. Uh, we also have uh, Alfredo Calderon from VSIG. How does IPv6 Pro compare to the sponsored um, compare with the sponsored by a generous grant um, from ISF, IF Asia? That is a good question that I'm not quite sure I have the answer to. Like I said, we're very early days with the IPv6 Pro concept that we're putting together. I would need to take a look at what um, the ISF Asia program is doing. Um, to see if there is a lot of, of similarity, but that's definitely something to explore. As I said, you know, if you guys have thoughts or ideas about what we might want to include, or if you might like to be involved in that IPv6 Pro series, um, we'd love to hear from you. So please let us know. All right, if there are any further questions, get those in. It does not appear that there are any more. I, uh, I'm oh, Mr. Anderson, up. do you have a question? I have a comment if there's no other comments and I just wanted while we have Paula's up here to just thank her and her team uh, first for all the accomplishments I just put there but just you know Aaron policy meetings are at the heart of, of Aaron's mission and a year ago when we were faced with like the rest of the world a bit of a throw up on how things to do the idea of virtual PPCs was very foreign I think to many of us in the board and I'm sure many in the staff um, and you know when we held our first one a year ago you know we were we had not high hopes. We understood that it was being put together on short notice. We were just hoped a few people would show up, but you know, the team blew it out of the water. We've now, this is our third PPC virtual. We're gonna have a, a fourth, obviously, we now know in October. And as Hall says, not a drop in attendance, engagement's never been higher, and the policy process hasn't taken a beat. Uh, so I just wanted to thank on behalf of the community, Hollis and your entire team, I know you guys put a, a huge amounts of work into putting this. I know it sounds easy. I'll just throw up the Zoom meeting, but tireless rehearsals, planning scenarios on how we can make sure that the policy process was. So I, I just wanted to thank you. That. And of course, the only thing we haven't replicated, so I put it on, on your, your to-do list, is how we can replicate what we normally do. I've asked all of you to give a round of applause to Hollis and our team. We'll have to imagine hearing it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would, John and I would just like that. So, I just want to take a moment, Hollis, to thank you, you and your team. It, it is outstanding what you've done uh, with these virtual meetings and that you gave the board a position in October when we were not sure how to handle now that things are returning, that it was 
do we go away from this virtual meeting very quickly when it has just been so successful? And of course, we look forward to some of the stuff that you guys are putting together as we return. So just want to take a moment and thank you for that and your team. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. It's, it's been an adventure, but we're happy to be on it with the community. Yes. Thank you. And thank, thank you so much. So thank you for that. And without further ado, we will go uh, to Mr. John Sweeting, who is going to give us an update on the internet resort, number resource transfer update. So 